I'm from Geneva tonight, but I bring you learnings from the African continent. Digitalization in present time is a buzzword that everyone is probably even getting tired of. And the impact of the global pandemic on digitalization in the African ecosystems cannot be overemphasized. I cannot go on to talk about this topic without first making reference to Professor Francesco Decci from the Geneva campus for all of his insights and ringing it in my ears throughout the period of my study. Ecosystems, three strong words, prepare, adapt, and disrupt. I call it the pad. And also, Professor Olesia Tomiuk, who I conducted a research with on the impact of digitalization on the African ecosystems. Yes, we are aware that uh, digitalization is a buzzword. Everyone is talking about it. But the real question is, what are we doing about it? And as Gandhi says, action expresses priority. And then the question tonight is, for the African business ecosystems, what is the priority? And how is the ecosystem posturing to benefit and maximize the possibilities that come with the opportunities of digitalization flowing from the impact of the pandemic. We cannot sincerely answer this question without first identifying certain things. There are certain factors that we need to talk about and be honest about it to say, oh, these are the areas of shortcomings. These are the areas where we are erring. These are the areas of mistake that we need to correct. This oftentimes comes down to two things, people. And in relation to people, it's about access. Also, the second theme is about law and policy, which is in relation to digital governance and digital security. How can the ecosystems, the African business ecosystems, truly posture and function if these two areas are not addressed. In March 2018, there was a coming together of about 55 member states under the body of the African Union <coughs> to start negotiations on how to better position and how to create an effective and sustainable ecosystem. But the question is how far have we gone? How far? as the negotiations been implemented? And how far are we posturing correctly to benefit from the present realities that we are in? On people and access, the conversations started. But then the focus, as I said earlier, prioritizing what is necessary. The focus at the time was not necessarily on digitalization, it was on many other things. As a result, the issue of the cost of accessibility and connectivity was overlooked. The quality was overlooked. Same for the market entry barriers as well as many other issues surrounding connectivity in the African continent and to foster, indeed, a good flow of trade and services in the African business ecosystems. And then we start to ask, it's not enough to just identify the mistakes. It's not enough to just talk about the problems. But then, what are we to do? What is this right posture that we're talking about? And again, we can see 
that in recent times with the impact of the pandemic in the African business ecosystems, it is not just about the buzzword digitalization, but now we can see that proactive steps are actually being taken to posture in the right manner and to re-strategize and rethink in order to avoid some of these shortcomings that has been plagued, that the, that the ecosystem has been plagued with. Some of, some of these uh, corrections, or some of these postures that is now being evidenced will be to start to form some partnerships. Because it is, it, I mean, we cannot just say, oh, we have some issues with accessibility. Then what is going to happen? How are the businesses going to perform truly? Because, okay, I have my, uh, my service that I want to render. You probably have your product that you want to, 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 to serve to consumers, to customers on the ecosystem that we seek to create. But how do we reach these people? And now we see some uh, institutions coming together to say, okay, let us develop partnerships between the government and between the telecommunication providers to ensure that there is ease of access. And then it does not stop there. There's a particular area that is oftentimes neglected, which is the uh, rural areas. It is very easy to focus all the attention on the city. But what happens to the people in the rural areas? And now we can see that there's a lot of steps taken. Say, for instance, uh, we have some efforts coming from some, some parts of the southern Africa. We have some efforts coming from Nigeria. We have some efforts coming from Ghana as well, to mention a few, in order to ensure that there is low cost accessibility to people in the rural areas, which is expected to help to foster a more collaborative business ecosystem. Aside this though, remember that Gandhi says, action expresses priority. It does not stop at just seeking to, to reduce the cost of accessibility. The question you want to ask yourselves, the question we want to ask ourselves tonight is, if the cost is being reduced, can people truly use it? And a practical example will be, say for instance, I have a Tesla and I have it parked in my garage and I do not know how to drive and I refuse to contract the services of someone who can drive it. It's going to remain there for beautification without being put to use. But as much as many of us will love to have a Tesla parked in our garages, it is better to even derive value for its purchase. And what am I saying? If we are able to achieve low cost connectivity we also need to support it with digital skills, digital literacy, vocational training, and to ensure that it is actually being put to use. And again, this is part of uh, the issues or the impact, I would say, that the COVID-19 pandemic has positively uh, affected the business ecosystem or the African continent as you may in the sense that you now have countries taking steps. Say for instance, you have Rwanda targeting the women entrepreneurs to ensure that there is ease of access. And so many other parts of the, country, of the continent. But it does not stop at just creating infrastructure, which is good. It does not stop at just educating and ensuring that people can use the resources The business ecosystem is also worried about the fact that if we do all of this, if we change our business models, do we have a robust governing system and regulatory framework to undo the issues that will come as a result of this shift in priority? And there you have it. We need to have 
definitely a more proactive uh, system of reviewing and changing the regulatory framework and environment. Presently, what, what is uh, obtainable is a snailish system. This is one of the shortcomings, and this is one of the shortcomings that has been further highlighted by the impact of the pandemic, particularly as it relates to digital governance and digital security. But then what do we do? Again, it is interesting to see that some of the stakeholders in the ecosystem have started to take proactive steps to learn from these mistakes and to make corrections where necessary. I can give you instances of some. You have Mauritius reviewing the Cyber Act, Cyber Crime Act. We have Kenya making some changes to the regulations and setting up panels and committees to ensure that the necessary things are in place. Nigeria and some other parts of the continent are also taking steps. Now the question is, are these steps effective? Are these steps sufficient? Is the ecosystem posturing correctly to maximize the potentials and possibilities from the impact of the pandemic? One will say it is not conclusive now to say, oh yes, it's a fantastic uh, improvement. But I must confess that it is moving in the right direction. And yes, the African business ecosystem is indeed learning from its mistakes and making changes where necessary. Thank you.